Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of the horoscope. So I was saying about Black Moon Lilith manifesting as the unfortunate tragedy that happened in the United States with the truck full of migrants. Well, yes, this is where, you know, Black Moon Lilith wants to help in a clandestine way, but that can go either way. Clandestine Black Moon Lilith ultimately doesn't necessarily benefit from the highest divine protection. It benefits from some kind of spiritual protection, okay, but not the highest kind. So sometimes it succeeds, other times, sadly, it turns into tragedy. But anyway, let's get into a more cheerful energy because this Mercury conjunct Black Moon Lilith squared by Jupiter, this is really, really good, because usually would tell me, but isn't this bad, a square tension? Well, Jupiter is your faith, it is your belief, it is your soul power, basically, especially in Aries, because this is where you have to project your strength, your fire, your fuel, your, you know, your divine spark at something, because all of us need to be taking action right now, taking action with the spirit, mentally making plans, contemplating inner work, that equals taking action, absolutely. Or for certain people, the challenge is not to take action. For example, someone who's recovering from an addiction, they, taking action as in a hobby or something, absolutely, because that will be needed but not taking action in the in that sense where that's not drink so it's 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 really necessary to do something with this power and neptune in the third deacon of pisces retrograde makes us feel a little bit very very low on energy fatigued even on a soul level but and especially physically but okay the fatigue is there absolutely but jupiter helps us generate that fire like we can still spark of ourselves up for a grand purpose and what is that grand purpose imagine mercury the planet of mind ultimately and also water planet so mercury can do quite okay in water signs we got even if when it's debilitated like in pisces it's like a web, like a mental web. And the web caught Black Moon Lilith. So Black Moon Lilith is in a way visible to us. Now let's understand this more psychologically or in an inner, this energy turned inward kind of way because we are much more faced with our darkness. May that be jealousy, may that be envy, may that be greed, may that be mistrust, may that... We all have something dark inside of us. And this is where it's very, very visible. What do we do with this Jupiter and Lilith and Mercury square? Well, of course, instead of helping it, we remove it. Hypnosis or any kind of symbolic um, gesture any kind of symbolic ritual to remove ultimately a really, really bad or broken pattern that is harming us, it is really, really encouraged under this energy. Now, we will definitely be seeing this play out on the world stage because, as I said, every cardinal sign has a part of the world stage on it. Different areas of the world stage yeah but it's still world stage so black moon lilith cancer is ethnicity borders family and dirty dirty secrets that would make you subject of judgment of basically the whole world so unpardonable unexcusable dirty secrets mercury planet of mind media communication investigation etc etc squaring jupiter Jupiter is the planet of justice, including, now, I hope I'm pronouncing this word correctly, jurisprudence. So, you know, 
the practice of jurisdiction. So that means court of justice. So whatever dirty secret is going to come out, it might have to face justice immediately. So this won't be a very, very easy energy. But in our individual lives, where we are Jupiter and Mercury caught, Mercury reveals to us, this is for you, your Lilith. As in, you are like this and this and this. And then you make the choice, well, I'm going to do something with it. I'm not going to allow this to run my life, run my preferences. Or, like for example, some people say, well, I'm going to cut out the triggers and then my life is going to be that much more serene. So everyone, how they will cope with this. But Jupiter will win this fight if we use it very, very co correctly to get out of bad situations, to end a conflict, to end something really, really toxic, especially a family situation, to finally find forgiveness or to finally stop seeking absurd justice. There sometimes you just say, let the justice belong to the heavens and I'm moving on with my life. Being obsessed with justice, well, there is a threshold where that's not healthy anymore. Just let it go. Whatever it is, if you want to live and be part of reality, well, let it go. This is the kind of energy that we have playing out. And the other side is where this Mercury squaring Jupiter... Well, this can also help us, as I said earlier, get out of the closet, but in such a way where it's not really a, a question of other people accepting it or not. This is where you're doing it for yourself. This is where you're doing it for the divine, perhaps. Doing it for the ether, because it's your declaration to the divine that you accept the way you were created and that is so very powerful and coming out of the closet is not what most people think i'm meaning of course that's included but that can mean for example my lived experience so in most of my viewers know that i play world of warcraft an online game and there was this team player, uh, no, a fellow player who we've played together for like a year and more than a year now. And we kind of had a connection because we we're from the same country, to Romania. And last week, or this week, this week, he randomly shared on Discord. I'm pretty sure most people know what that is. It's like a channel type of thing where everyone can share what they want. A picture of him making such a beautiful painting that like I genuinely could not stop looking at it and I downloaded it and I magnified it and I looked at every single detail. The next day, of course, I congratulated him and blah, 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 you know, and found out that he was just born with it. He was never, he never had one minute of education art wise in his life. That's coming out of the closet. And his profession has zero with art. That's coming out of the closet because it's not anything sexual or whatever, but he is coming out as an artist by sharing that picture. You have it with virtual friends, okay, but that's coming out. That's like, you share it with friends first and then maybe tomorrow you can share it with in an art gallery. So everyone has a talent. Everyone has a beauty within them. Like the opposite of Black Moon Lilith. The, the shadow, the, the darkness. Because we human beings are made from shadow and light equal. We cannot be all light. Never ever. Nor, nor are we supposed to. So, but everyone has something so very beautiful that it's like shocking. And this is exactly coming out of the closet. And it's not just Jupiter 
squaring Mercury with coming out of the closet, showing that which makes you so beautiful that you intentionally have to hide it from other people. But it's also a Merc a Sun sextiling Uranus. When many people do this in many different areas of life, you can imagine that everyone will be bombarded by another person's beauty. A painting or so anything that makes you special and you want to show it to the world, well, that's coming out of the closet. That will be like a show of, I don't know, like a, a cosmic firework in the ether where every single little boom or every single spark is a person showing what it is that they can do that they were born with. So that is so, so beautiful. And me seeing that play out, well, I, I can imagine that I actually felt blessed to witness this as an observer because it was such a pleasant surprise because it was genuinely not even I always knew of course as an astrologer and all my experience that that ex player that guy is probably a really really kind and compassionate and mature and with a strong potential type of person that was easy to determine but to deliver something this amazing that was the shock i did not see that coming and you can imagine what a positive thing it was for me and all of us are going to be seeing this especially towards the end of the week so this is the beauty of it this is what we have to focus on because anoretic mars the conflict and the war and the problems are going to be fully on there. <laughs> don't get me wrong. And also, I don't like to speak about this, but when it's on, it's on. Ceres also in Cancer is squaring Eris. Eris is goddess of chaos, discord. So Ceres is food. So we need to be kind of aware if there is like food transport disruptions in our country or local community maybe we need to have an extra stored food an extra tin of this and that and stuff like that because this unfortunately can equal short term a short period food disruption whatever that may play out but it can also represent like ethnicity of food and nourishment is it ethnical is it okay is it safe is it way too mutated you know there are going to be a lot of discussions on the world stage about this and now i want to leave on the last but most beautiful energy where is not going to be exact at the very end of the week this is an energy that is going to follow us into the other week the following week and it's Venus trining a Saturn and this is so beautiful because this is a reward of some kind now I can expect that if you're a communicator a person who uh, has any kind of activity on social media if you are a person who um, speaks beautifully a public speaker, customer service, work with people, or simply have a large uh, friend base, if you are a person who connects people to one another, if you are an artist, if you are, you know, anything that has to do with Gemini or Aquarius, so humanitarianism, working with people, uh, offering a service to people, anything like that, well, this can be really, really good news. For artists, for example, this is a really good inspiration, recognition for uh, students because they, they definitely fall into this category, intellectual work. That's definitely included in this. Students can get really good grades at exams. Their project or whatever they did for the exam can go beyond what they expected. This is when someone does a really, really good essay or you know, all this stuff, well, the teacher is so impressed they share it with the academic world and 
the student can benefit from who knows what. So it's the pleasant kind of surprises or people who offered services for free. Uh, delayed gratification pays off this time because this can also mean money. This can also mean contracts. This can also mean invitation. Please, this is where you're not looking for a job. The job is looking for you. This is where you get a phone call. Please work for me. And you guys, well, where did you, where do you know me from? I heard from this and that and that person. If I heard that you're good from that people, well, I don't need any job interview. You're hired now. Come and work for me. So this is the good type of energy. And ultimately, Venus, this is also good for love. Help of a partner. If you have a big project or you have an important moment in your life or any kind of difficulty, your partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, or anyone, Saturnian of nature, grandpa or father figure or just a really, really good friend can help you out. Money, help, generosity, but friends, you know, because the Venusian element, love has to be there. Of course, with Aquarius, even a total stranger can help you out, don't get me wrong. But Saturn usually needs a bit of history together, even if, if it's a previous encounter. So this can represent a lot of positive surprises where a good karma comes back into your life. And for people who are creative intellectually, like writers, communicators, speakers... This is where your work can reach big ears, big eyes, or a lot of shares, surprisingly. And this energy is in any way, shape, and form good for recognition. And delayed gratification, as I said, paying off. This is when the, the clock, the celestial clock, says that, you know, all that delayed gratification, the money you didn't take, or the little old woman you helped on the street and you said, oh, don't be silly, don't, you don't need to pay me. And stuff like that. This is where it gathers up. And Saturn just gives you. It can be money. But it can be love. It can be good fortune. It can be... It can be something truly, truly positive. But... Any kind of good deed. Under this energy. Air sign. It can lead to quick, instant... Good karma. If you are... The instrument of good karma for another person... You just invite it into your life. So yeah, this is how at least we should be using this energy. But I must say, so many energy shifts all at once. So Mercury changing sign. That's not that very easy because right now it's still empowering us with, you know, being in its home sign of Gemini. We are that much more lucid. We are that much more aware when it gets into cancer, this is where it sinks into heart and emotion. It's nearing Leo, the heart, but this is where it's still the votary emotion. We need to think about our situations regarding other people. Like, are we just we? No, we are also mom, dad, my brother, sister. And or so we should be, because we also share responsibilities and duties. So this is where Mercury, okay, okay, your situation, personal situation is kind of figured out, but now it's you and mom, dad, and, 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 or even if it's not the case, or even if your family is so very strongly interwoven that it's natural, this is very, very natural to always share with family. But then you can have, you know, your ho house, your home <laughs> needing to change or something happens or an upgrade or an investment or, you know, getting married or you're not single overnight. You are, you're, you're living a single life and you're more than happy and you don't want to, you don't want to get into a partnership, fate, and tomorrow you are in a partnership, that means you, you're living situation is gonna change and that's cancer yeah virgo but also cancer because two how should i say? double bed yeah double bed bigger pillows two plates you know your life changes after partnership but immediately not in next week but from the moment you said yes that kind of starts changing even if you don't move in together but still the Cleaning, your your own personal hygiene, everything upgrades and changes, if you know what I mean. 
And for all of this, this week is really, really good. But it's not easy because the mind shifts, but Mars, the will, and Taurus. This is where we don't care how hard it is, how long it takes, even if this will consume us, but whatever decisions we know in our heart of hearts that we need to enact this year or in this nodal activity as a nodal activity, the nodes transiting Taurus and Scorpio axis, we need to do it. So we really, really need to do it. And Mars is activating Taurus. And we had a lot in Taurus. We had a lot of energy in Taurus. So Mars is the activator. You can imagine when Mars meets Uranus and the node, it will be very, 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 very intense. Economically, especially worldwide. It can be very intense in a good way for us. And imagine, because I'm not going to lie, this can mean shedding off losses. But imagine when someone gets out from the city from a concrete prison, the freedom of it, the love of it. This is when you will be grateful to the universe that it took away your iPhone because that's a prison, your laptop a prison, your modern friends leeches. <laughs> you know, when I say modern friends, well, those friends who just live in matter and don't even know anything other than that. So that, that's sad. That's sad, really. In the age of Aquarius, that's very, very sad. So very liberating, all of it, the shedding off South Node and Scorpio. It's taking off the excess. It's taking off that which we don't need. So most of us are so very grateful to have that little what we have. And this is also what is encouraged. So you can imagine Mars conjunct the node of the moon and Uranus, of course not this week, much later on. But this energy is in preparation of that. So all of us are right now, with this Mars in the sign of Taurus, are being reminded of how blessed we are to be minimalistic. The blessing is not the fact that we don't have 10 trillion equipment and gadgets and accounts and whatever, clothes or whatever. The blessing is that we are so aware and appreciative of the little we have. And we have that common sense to know that nature needs only so much. So we can be more than happy just by having food and a little bit of love and maybe a dog and a tree. So that's where ha perfect happiness begins. And you can imagine that also this week a lot of people are going to know for certain that I'm moving away from urban place, I'm moving away from the big city, I'm moving away from and going back to a small community, a small little city. This is where everyone will start to migrate into the very, very, very small, sleepy, stale communities and start slowly taking over. So the small little dead communities are now starting to come alive, but not, it, it's not felt yet because right now it's just a tiny spark. In a few years, that spark will grow into a plant, so to speak, or into a blaze or into whatever it will grow. And then is when the life is going to return to the community. And this is where all of it is happening in the background. So we, you and me, are definitely part of this energy. Where it will guide us, we don't know, neither should we. Should we. And astrocartography and other tricks of the trade are not going to be working this year. Neither solar return, but don't trust me. Try, but this year, everyone's future is really a guess. So thank you so much for listening. Please try and listen and use this energy to truly invest it in your, your ideals, in your dreams, in whatever makes you happiest, and with the intent to share it with everyone. 
and and this is where everyone can potentially be an equal a brother or sister because all it takes for us is to will it those who don't will this are not your friends so this is where love also has to be mutual because this is how the age of pisces closes the in the age of pisces it was washed in the ether and the spirit of christ so sometimes it wasn't necessarily mutual sacrifice. The saints, the martyrs had to give and Christ himself. Every atom of his physical expression. Because it couldn't be reciprocated. But it has to end. Now it has to be reciprocated. Because this is Aquarius, the two waves, two, you and me, the individual and the individual interconnected, a network woven of souls. So everyone's important. The big, the big, how should I say, interwoven web is important. The unity of that, but the individual right now gets to be even more important. And the individual is not the ego, not the hyper-ego. The individual is that what you true-heartedly offer to your fellow human being. That is what you are. It's not what you know. It's, it's what, that which you are willing to offer with all your heart. And if you say that all I can have to offer is myself and my time to be a loving partner to someone, that absolutely fine that's so very needed so this is where everyone has something to offer but the key here is love and surprise surprise this is how Pluto is collapsing Capricorn the practicality of it starts mattering so little less and less and less the love of it starts mattering more and more and more. And I see this playing out in my city. People are buying from imperfect artisans rather than the perfect any type of shop you want. And it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And this will become very, very soon in the, the latest, the latest, by 2026, when Taurus finally gets rid of Uranus, because Uranus will enter Gemini, but it can happen, Uranus, well, it's spontaneous, it can happen tomorrow, because <laughs> all Uranus needs is a spark of something, a gateway, and it's here. But this is already starting to be a norm, and if it's in my country, it must be 10 trillion percent in your country because mine is always 200 years behind of everyone else so yes let's all work together here and just offer what we offer with total love and an open heart and let's also receive that which a brother or a sister or someone else has to offer so thank you so much for listening if you'd like to support my work, you can donate in the PayPal link in the description below. With this being said, thank you again. Until next time, bye for now.